Medicine Buddha Sutra, translated into English by the Fu Guangshan International Translation Center, read by Miao Guang from Fu Guangshan Institute of Humanistic Buddhism. Thus have I heard. One time. While traveling and teaching throughout several countries, the Bhagavad arrived at the magnificent city of Vaishali. There he sat beneath the joyful tree of musical breezes, and was joined by a great multitude of beings, both human and non-human. In attendance. Was a retinue of highly cultivated bhikshus, eight thousand in number. Accompanying them was a throng of bodhisattvas and great bodhisattvas, thirty-six thousand in total. Also, in attendance, were kings and their subjects. Brahmins, laity, and a constellation of heavenly beings. This great congregation respectfully gathered around the Buddha to hear his teaching. At that time, the Dharma Prince Manjusri, with the Buddha's omniscient power, arose from his seat. And came before the Buddha, bearing his right shoulder, and bowing upon his right knee with joined palms. The young prince implored, "World honored one, we wish that you would speak to us about the various Buddha's names and honorary titles, their great vows." And their magnificent virtues. We hope that all who are within hearing of these words can become free from karmic obstructions. Moreover, for the sake of sentient beings in the period of semblance dharma, we hope these beneficial words can make them truly happy. Upon hearing this request, the world honored one praised Manjusri. Excellent, excellent, Manjusri. It is out of your deep and heartfelt compassion for sentient beings that you have implored me to speak of the Buddha's names and titles, original vows. And virtues that accompany them. This is in order to release sentient beings from their entanglements in karmic obstructions, and also to bring peace and joy to those in the period of semblance dharma. Now, for your benefit, I am going to speak. You should listen attentively, and contemplate carefully what I am going to say. Splendid," replied Manjusri. "We are most happy to hear from you." The Buddha thus began to speak. Manjusri, east of here. Beyond Buddha lands, as innumerable as the sands of the Ganges River, there exists a Buddha world called the world of pure crystal, where the medicine Buddha of pure crystal radiance presides. Adorned with sacred titles, this Buddha is commonly honored as. Worthy one, truly all-knowing, 
perfect in knowledge and conduct. Well gone. Knower of the world. Unsurpassed. Tamer. Teacher of heavenly and human beings. Awakened one. And Bhagavat. Manjusri. Twelve great vows evolved from the heart of the world honored medicine Buddha of pure crystal radiance as he advanced upon the Bodhisattva path. These vows were made with the heartfelt wish that all sentient beings might fulfill their aspirations. The first vow is this. In a future lifetime, may I attain Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Thus, my body shall be one of bright radiance, shining forth in blazing illumination. Without measure, boundary, or limitation, lighting up innumerable worlds. This body will be adorned with the 32 marks of excellence and the 80 noble qualities, which accompany the form of the true man. May all sentient be likewise brilliant and adorned in body, completely equal to me. The second vow is this. In a future lifetime, upon my enlightenment, may my body be as clear as pure crystal, flawless and impeccable within and without. May it be of boundless radiance and majestic virtue, of serene abiding goodness. May this body be a magnificent blazing net of glory, more brilliant than the sun and moon, able to embrace and awaken even those beings caught in the depths of profound darkness and gloom. Thus shall all beings accomplish their endeavors according to their intentions. The third vow is this. In a future lifetime, Upon my enlightenment, may I enable all beings to gain an abundance of things most useful and enjoyable, eliminating all scarcity or want. This I will accomplish through boundless wisdom and skillful means beyond measure. The fourth vow is this. In a future lifetime, upon my enlightenment, may all sentient beings choose to follow the peaceful way of Bodhi instead of traveling the path of evil. If there are beings who are proceeding via the Sravaka or Pratyeka Buddha vehicle. May they become engaged by means of the great vehicle. 
The fifth vow is this: In a future lifetime, upon my enlightenment, may sentient beings beyond number practice wholesome living and uphold all precepts according to my teachings. Through the commitment to actualize the Dharma. May they accomplish the Tri Vidani Silani, three categories of Bodhisattva precepts. When beings violate any precept, their purity can be restored, and they can avoid falling into the suffering realms simply upon hearing my name. The sixth vow is this: In a future lifetime, upon my enlightenment, I vow to aid all sentient beings who suffer from any form of malady. I vow to relieve those whose bodies are deformed. Who lack their complete sense organs? Who lack beauty and appeal? Or who are simple-minded? Or foolishly stubborn? Those who are blind, deaf, raspy-voiced, or mute. Who suffer with palsied or crippled limbs? Who are hunchbacks, or lepers, or insane? Or who encounter any other form of infirmity? All these shall, after hearing my name. Gain optimum health, an intuitive mastery of all knowledge and skills. They shall find themselves in complete possession of all sense organs, and no longer experience the suffering of illness. The seventh vow is this. In a future lifetime, upon my enlightenment, if there are any sentient beings who are tormented by illness, who have no hope of release or respite from their suffering, who are without doctors or medicine. Or who have no family members or other caregivers to assist them, who are homeless or impoverished, or are suffering in any way, I vow that once the sound of my name has penetrated their ears, all illness shall cease. And they shall find serene contentment in body and mind. They shall be surrounded by family and caregivers, and all that they have previously lacked shall become abundantly available to them, even unto the actualization of Buddhahood. The eighth vow is this: In a future lifetime, upon my enlightenment, if there are any women who feel coerced or oppressed by the many disadvantages of the female form, 
and have given rise to the desire to let go of that form. They shall, after hearing my name, be transformed into the male form. Accompanying this form are all the characteristics of the true man, even unto the attainment of Buddhahood. The ninth vow is this. In a future lifetime, upon my enlightenment, all who are caught in the net of evil shall be released from their entanglement in heterodox practices. If there are those who have fallen into the dark forest of evil views, they shall all become established in the correct perspective and gradually assume practice of all the bodhisattva's disciplines, quickly actualizing Buddhahood. The tenth vow is this. In a future lifetime, upon my enlightenment, if there are any sentient beings who, due to the enforcement of local laws, find themselves sentenced to flogging, incarceration, torture, execution, or any other manner of brutal punishment, they shall be aided by hearing my name. For those who are insulted, humiliated, or in abject misery, or who are oppressed by burning anxiety, suffering in both body and mind, if they hear my name, due to the power of my awe-inspiring spiritual Ellen, all shall gain release from their suffering and woes. The eleventh vow is this. In a future lifetime, upon my enlightenment, if there are any sentient beings who commit wrongdoings due to the agony of hunger and thirst, they shall be aided by hearing my name and concentrating on it. First, by providing exquisite delicacies, I will bring about their complete bodily satisfaction and contentment. Physically sated, they may then enjoy the wondrous flavor of the Dharma and become established in spiritual satisfaction and contentment. The twelfth vow is this. In a future lifetime, upon my enlightenment, if there are any sentient beings who are without clothing due to poverty, who suffer day and night the afflictions of extreme heat and cold and the torment of insects. They shall be aided by hearing my name and concentrating on it. They shall be afforded that which they wish. 
the acquisition of many kinds of exquisite clothing, precious gems for adornment, flowered hair ornaments, perfumed ointments, and musical entertainment. The full enjoyment of all these things shall evoke their complete satisfaction and contentment. Manjusri. These are the twelve supremely subtle and wonderful vows of the world-honored Medicine Buddha of pure crystal radiance. Worthy one. Truly all-knowing, while he was practicing the Bodhisattva path. <laughs>